today we're going to cook Kung Pao beef, which is a variation of the iconic Kung Pao chicken. And uh, very important to have all of your ingredients ready, which we've prepared here. Very important when you're walking in front of the walk, a lot happening, very fast paced. You want that, that walk to be screaming hot and you want everything in arm's reach where you can reach for it. So a lot going on here. And we're going to show you how to do it today. Okay, so a little bit skeptical here about the Kung Pao beef. You know, typical from a Chinese restaurant, you know, you order fried rice, you got the beef, you got the pork, you got the chicken, you got the, you got the uh, uh, vegetable, you got all kinds of variations. So Kung Pao, why wouldn't you have the same, right? There really is no Kung Pao beef in China. There's just Kung Pao chicken. But here, we got the Kung Pao shrimp, we have Kung Pao beef, we have Kung Pao pork. So we're gonna make Kung Pao beef today. And for you beef lovers, that's good news. Here we go. Barley's watching. <laughs> Alright, ba basic Kung Pao beef. We have our sauce over here that we've pre-mixed. A little bit of hoisin sauce and soy sauce and sesame oil and other spices. And we've got our raw peanuts here. We're going to wok roast those for uh, maximum uh, crispiness and uh, flavor. And then we uh, have our velveted beef that we've cut into small cubes or slices actually to match the shape of the peanuts. Um, that's what we do in Chinese cooking. We match the shapes for, uh, and then here we have a little bit of, uh, I use uh, red bell pepper, but, uh, you could use, I mean, uh, yellow bell, uh, pepper, but you could use red bell pepper or orange bell pepper. looks a little bit better than green bell pepper and they're sweeter as well. Uh, we've got dried chili. We've got some, uh, garlic and finely minced ginger and scallions with the whites and the greens somewhat separated. As you can see, this is a pretty simple dish. You don't need that many special ingredients. We're gonna walk fry the peanuts. Turn on the flame. Low, actually low to medium. You First you wanna heat up the, the wok. So you're not here all day. So you put it on high, which I've got it on. And I'm gonna add a tablespoon of oil, which will help cook the peanuts and this oil is going to stay in the wok and we're going to use it so just spread it around and i'm just going to add the peanuts right in so you hear them start sizzling right away that means i'm going to turn down the flame You want to keep these peanuts moving, right, Barley? Keep these peanuts moving so they don't burn or scorch. It's gonna take five to six minutes, so you gotta be patient. You're starting to smell a little fragrant. You can see they're starting to smoke a little bit. So you want to turn down the uh, turn down the flame. The most important thing is to keep these peanuts moving. It takes five to six minutes, you can't really rush it. And this is why in the restaurant, we used to just throw it in the deep fryer because you throw it in the deep fryer, they don't burn or scorch, you don't get any hot spots. It was surrounded by 325 degree uh, oil and they, they, uh, they fry very uniformly. Mm -hmm. It's a fast way of doing it and in that three, four minutes that it takes to toast the uh, peanuts in the fryer, uh, you could be doing something else. All right, these peanuts are starting to get where we want them to be. They're a little bit brown, and they're getting a little crunchy. They're drying out a little bit and getting tasty. I can smell them. They're starting to get fragrant. So when we take these out and let them cool down a little bit, they'll actually get crunchy right now. They're pretty soft. And they're just about ready to take out. Now they're really starting to get nice. They're ready. I think I did a little bit, a little bit longer than six minutes. But you know, you can see visually when they're brown. Because these started out very white and now they're now they're a nice golden brown. Alright, so shut off the flame. I'm gonna take them out of the water. There we go. Hear that? I think I do actually. I hold it closer to your mic. 
Okay, very good. Next we're gonna see the beat. I'm going to turn the walk up to high. I'm gonna put, uh, I've already, got, there's a little bit of oil the, uh, from the pe frying the peanuts uh, that's coated really well, but you know, I'm gonna need two tablespoons of oil here. We're gonna sear the beef, make them nice and, nice crispy beef, which is really nice for this dish. So I'm gonna spread this oil around even more. And you can see when we say just starting to smoke, that's what it's doing, just starting to smoke. And actually when you sear beef, it's okay to have it even smoke a little bit more. So I'm gonna put these, put the beef down and I'm gonna spread it one layer. Want to get a good spread on the beef here. So I gotta sear one side of it. So this beef has been velveted with a little bit of baking soda. I, I chose to not the rinsing method, but the just a, a eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda, and this has been marinating for three four hours. You can marinate it overnight, um, but uh, these. Uh, the beef is going to be nice and tender and it's coated with cornstarch, which this searing is going to give it a really nice crust. That's what you want for this, for this dish. And you can see these little small chunks of beef so I'm just about ready to turn them over and you're going to see a nice golden brown. That's kind of what we want, even, even, even a little bit more. There you go. Look at that. And just use your little corner of your wok spatula. Make a little adjustments here and there. Look at that. That's what you want. Nice searing. Yeah, you get it's about a minute and a half, two minutes on each side, depending upon your flame and your heat. Yeah, that's why you want to start off the wok really hot, so you don't want to overcook the beef, but also so it doesn't stick. You can see that we we have this velveted beef that's uh, that's uh, coated with cornstarch and some and some sauce, but it's not sticking. Now I'm just gonna stir fry it around, and you can see no sticking. That's about right, I think. So we're we're gonna. We're gonna take the walk, uh, take the beef up, and what you can do now is push all the beef up to one side. Little tip: let the oil drain off because we're gonna use that oil. Turn it off for now, the heat, while you're doing this. And you know what? Just use the bowl that you had it in. You're gonna cook it again, the beef. Why wash another bowl? All right, here you go. I'm gonna put it close together. And now, now you've got a good amount of oil left in here. And you've got all this nice crusties on the wok that we're gonna deglaze with. So here, here's what we're gonna start with. And turn it up to medium heat, medium low heat again, because the wok is already screaming hot. And I'm gonna put the ginger in and the peppers because we want to toast those. So you want a low heat. You, want to, you don't want to burn these. You want to toast these. Oh boy, you can smell those. You get a nice, nice peppery, popcorny flavor almost when you're toasting these. And again, this is under low heat. You toss that a little while. Yeah, look at those. You know, you're gonna eat these peppers, right? These peppers are super, super fragrant. You know, you, you know if you could take some heat, you're gonna eat these peppers. Okay, next I'm gonna add the 
the peppers, and I'm going to add the white portions of the scallion. Cook that for a little while. About 30 seconds, 20, 30 seconds, 40 seconds. Not too long. Then I'm just going to pour the beef back in with all the juices. Get, them all, get all that juice in there. Very nice. Turn the heat up a little. And then uh, I'm going to put the garlic in. I like to put the garlic in in the end because you get a little bit of a raw garlic taste, which is really nice. You could do the same with the ginger if you're a ginger lover. But I like my ginger a little bit cooked, more cooked. Next, I'm going to get the sauce. I'm sitting here, I'm going to stir it up because there is a little cornstarch in this sauce. I got this nice little spatula, and I'm just going to pour it right in. Scrape the bowl. The spatula. Deglazes everything really nice. Throw the peanuts in. Mix it up a little bit. Looks a little thick. Looks just a tad thick, so you know what? I'm going to add like a, a little bit of water. It's okay to do this, or chicken stock. It's just because it looks a little thick. That's it. That was about like a tablespoon or two of water, maybe. Depending on how hot your uh, wok is. Now I'm going to just throw these rest of the scallions in there. See what I mean when uh, things are a little frantic and you get done? And now we're ready to plate it. it smells like Chinatown. I'm like a Chinese restaurant in here. Okay, ready to go. Ready to plate. Look at that. Better watch your thumb. Don't burn your thumbs. And this. Beef. Photographs are taken. I'm eating the beef <laughs> with the rice, of course. Look at that. Oh yeah. Mmm. Peanuts are good. Get a little bit of just pepper. And get some rice and look, look at this. These peppers are so toasty and delicious right here. So toasty and delicious. I'm gonna get a little bit of this. This is so good. You get a little bit of the, um, a little bit of tartness from the, from the rice wine vinegar, and a little touch of hoisin, but not too much. And the Sichuan peppercorn powder just really pops on this dish, along with these, this peanut flavor. Kung Pao beef, try it at home. So good. Mm. Get away. <laughs> so good. Kung Pao beef. You gotta try it at home. Chapter peanut. <laughs> Let me try it again.